Hey y'all, um, this is me again. Um, about 13 years ago, and you can see it down here, uh, it's uh, February 18th, 2011. Um, I was at work, and I was reading through my Bible, and I came across this passage, and I've been wanting to do this forever. I've been wanting to make a comparison video as to what I read then and what I am reading now, and so I found the opportunity to do it, and I'm going to do it. So um, I already made a previous recording on this and everything, but I kind of wanted to be in a more of a relaxed area and everything and try it again. So I'm at home, and uh, about another 30 or 40 minutes here, I'm going to try to take me a nap. I'm on a last night at work, then I'll have two nights off. Yay. And it's going to be the weekend, and this weekend's supposed to be a little bit chilly. But neither here nor there. Um, so you'll see me here, my younger version of myself from when I was about 38, 39 years old. Um, I'm reading the, um, probably, yeah, 38. Uh, no, I wasn't quite 38. Sorry. My birthday would be in, in 10 days. But now it's in, uh, another 12 days to my birthday, and I'll be 52. Um, anyway, so... I'm reading the passage here of uh, John chapter 6, verse um, 26 to 29, I believe. And you'll hear me use Greek words and stuff like that and all that other stuff. And <clears throat> I'll just kind of go over it as I we're going and uh, trying to elucidate, if that's a crazy word, uh, what I was saying here, what I, what I was saying then and what is to what I'm saying now. Because there's... My mind and my brain was one place, and but the word, the Bible that I was using, was somewhat in another. And but there were some things, some influences of man that were still in my head. And so when I got to God's influence instead of man's influence, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit instead of inspiration of man, and things changed. The Lord showed me a lot of neat stuff and a lot of revelation, I suppose, of His true and perfect word. So. Let's let it go and see what it says here. What I'm saying, rather. I want to read something to you here about faith and belief. Belief and faith. Believing and faith. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 29 says this. Uh, well, actually, what it was, it started out where, you know, Jesus fed 5,000 people and uh, the disciples went across the lake, and it started getting stormy, and Jesus walked across and rebuked the storm, and they went over to the other side. After they got over to the other side, uh, the people came and says, uh, Rabbi, where have you been? He said, and verse 26, he says, I tell you the truth, you want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking their eternal life that the Son of Man can give you, being that's Jesus. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval to perform God's miracles, or excuse me, God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the work that God wants from you. Okay, so let me get this clear here. Um... That's the all, all that's the mentality of works-based theology. You have to do something to save yourself. That is not the case. You don't have to do anything to save yourself. All you have to do, really, as far as works-based stuff, is believe in the one that the Lord God sent to die on the cross for your sins. Uh, it's not a thing of doing as a work. It's a thing of believing. And like I said in there from the very outset... Of having faith I knew all this stuff I had it in my head but of course then again there were some things that the things of man's teaching from what I've been hearing from other men the doctrine and theology of men that crept in and I'm gonna show that here in just a second so what I want to do real quick before I let myself go on a little any further is go into verse 26 it says Jesus answered them and said verily verily I say unto you Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not. Here's an important verse here in verse twenty seven. It says labor 
not. Don't work for it. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give you, give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. And uh, it's like, I think that's what I was saying, that's God's seal of approval. And of course, the NLT would say things like that. And it says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the work of works, work the works of God, rather? And Jesus just told them, Labor not. And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. It's not the work of man. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. That's the key. So let's see what else I have to say here. Believe in the one he has sent. That's the only work that's required. Not praying every day, and not reading your Bible every day, and not handing out water every day. Prayer is a good thing, though. The other stuff that doesn't really matter so much because if the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you, you'll do all the other stuff. Hey, Bible tracks, Bibles, praying to some kind of cross, or taking Eucharist, or taking communion, or fasting. That's not it. That's not what God wants. God wants your faith and trust in Him. All those things. He says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and everything else shall be added to you. Uh, uh, fasting don't get you any closer to God. It might be a good thing to do. I'm not discounting it. I'm not saying not reading your Bible is not a uh, good thing to do. It is. You need to read your Bible. But if you think that's going to get you any closer to God by praying, by reading, by fasting, by doing whatever, get you in good with God, get your brownie points, make Him pleased with you, then you're wrong. You got another thing coming. I think what I was trying to say there is it was all the works based stuff that people do these days. And uh, even back then at that time, 13 years ago, it was always works based stuff. Uh, well, if I do this, if I perform, if I perform this way, if I perform, perform that way, you gotta be, you gotta be pleased with me. If I read, read my Bible religiously, if I memorize scripture and things like that, which people, a lot of people these days try to do, then I'll be in good with God. We'll be, we'll be buddy buddies and, you know, I won't have nothing bad happen to me and he'll be watching out after me. Uh, your faith is, um, is pleasing to God. Your faith is what you know, grants God's love towards you and in the Son, Jesus Christ. So, um, anyway, all this other stuff, all this works-based stuff, you know, it, it doesn't do anything to make God less or more pleased with you. It's just, um, you really just basically uh, wearing yourself out because God has already done everything he needed to do with his son and his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. It just says so right here. The work he wants you to do is to believe in the one he has sent. It's Jesus Christ. Okay, so... And that's not really even work in itself. First comes the faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then the works of the Holy Spirit exude from that. It's not something you do, it's your faith beginning with, but faith faith produces works, and we can get into a really long discussion as to what Paul said and you know in his letters and epistles and things like that. Anyway, moving on. There's two words to this in in first John. Um, and there's, they use, they're used interchangeably, believe, okay? And that word is a Greek word, uh, I guess it's also a, um, a, um, a Hebrew word, I just can't find it right off. Uh, I wish I could go back down there 13 years later, and 13 years later and say, hey, but you don't do that. Don't read it out, please, because <laughs> it's ambiguous for one thing, and number two is just it doesn't. It's not going to go anywhere because um, 
the Greek of today and the, and the Hebrew of today is not the same as it was over 2,000 years ago. It's not the same thing. So that's why the Lord God preserved English. I mean, used English to preserve. And that's why I've been saying a lot here as far as on uh, my regular stuff that, uh, uh, especially Insta oh, not Instagram, but uh, some things, things on Instagram and others, uh, about the English language, how it preserves God's word, and how the English language brought the gospel through the English empire throughout all the world, the whole earth. The sun never set on the English language, so therefore, the British Empire, so therefore it had never said um, on God's holy and perfect word in the authorized version of the King James Bible. Um, it's not the worship of a King James Bible, it's, a, it's um, that knowing that God can, see, it says in um, Genesis 40, verse 8, uh, through Joseph, that God, interpretation belong to God. He can give interpretation, so therefore he can have us a holy and perfect Bible, and we don't even know it, but we think, oh, well, we got to have it in IV and LT. No, it's not. It just as there's one Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, there is one perfect Word of God. There's one Bible that can give us everything we need for faith and practice or our salvation. Let's see what else we have to say here. Uh, it's called Pistio. Pistio, Pistio, um, and the strong number for that is 4100, and the one that's just like it says faith. And it's See, that's the, uh, that's the problem that I had at the time. I was relying on uh, Strong's Concordance, Zodiades, Vines, Nessa Island, stuff like that. I was trying to be like everybody else. I had to that still had that Presbyterian mindset, I think, because a couple of years prior to this, I was part of the Presbyterian Church, Presbyterian Church of America (PCA). I didn't really consider myself a Presbyterian, but I guess from what I was been taught previously or showed previously by brethren and stuff like that, then you know it was kind of very on the lines of Catholicity or whatever you want to call that, the Catholic Church. But um, anyway, um, I just found out later that God's holy and perfect word, you don't need um, explanations of the ambiguous sort or type of lexiconic verse uh, who plagiarized God's word, who took it and took things out, put things in and readjusted it and then sold it for their own uh, evil purposes. Purposes, and some of them email well-meaning, but still, they went out there and sold God's word to make a profit for themselves. And uh, they thought they might have been doing a good work for God, and that's the problem. They were trying to do a work for God, and not trust in the fact that He had His holy words preserved in the Greek, in the Hebrew, with English. Pistis. And I don't teach. No, don't think it means P. It doesn't. Uh, the verb, this verb, pistio, pistio, excuse me, and the related noun, pistis, refer to confidence that something is real with a strong implication that action will ensue from this belief. While faith can be rather... See, that's the whole thing there. The ambiguity of everything there, the means this but it also means this it also means that and it could also mean this it's just it's more confusing than it is helpful you know what i mean mundane an example would be believing in a report report in first corinthians 11 18 and the new testament it's almost always refers to faith in god or christ such faith entails active belief I get this. Entrusting oneself completely to God. Not 20%, not 30%, 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90. Entrusting oneself completely, completely to God. Now, some scripture verses in that are John 8, um, 30. 
uh, John 12, 11, Acts 5, 14, Acts 18, 8, Romans 1, 17, Romans 3, 22, and 25, uh, Romans 5, 1, Romans 10, 17, Romans 14, 1, Galatians 2, 20, Ephesians 2, 8, Philippians 1, 27, 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, 1 Timothy 4, 6, Hebrews 6, 1, Hebrews 11, 1, James 2, 14, and 20, 1 John 3, 23. Anyway, fasting, uh, reading your Bible so many chapters a day uh, doesn't get you anywhere with God. It's by faith in the one that he has sent. And that's Jesus Christ. Um, it says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added to you. You think you seek face of God. I mean, only the Holy Spirit can help you learn who God is. I mean, ask for wisdom, ask for knowledge, ask for understanding. And God will reveal himself to you in that fashion, in that way. And the only way to really truly know God is something you can't do, but it's something the Holy Spirit allows you to, to know, to. See, at that point there, I started getting it a little by little, here, a little, there, a little, Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. <laughs> and so I started getting these things, but at the, still at the same time, it was the works of man. And I remember going into my bedroom one time and laying on my bed, 1 Corinthians 2.13 kept popping in my head, it kept coming in my head. You know, the things, the spiritual was spiritual. So I'm going to go to it real quick here and show you exactly what I mean. By reading the scripture. It's easy to get to because one day I was laying on my bed and my son came in and threw a snowball at me and it wrinkled up my paper. So it's easy to turn to now. Uh, so anyway, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, um, what did I say, 1, what, what did I say? Uh, well, maybe I did. Oh, yeah, 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 it's there. Okay. 1 Corinthians um, 2.13, starting at verse 12, it says, Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual that verse kept ramrodding in my head. Um, 1 Corinthians 2.13, 1 Corinthians 2.13, 1 Corinthians 2.13. It kept just going off of my head over and over again until I read it. But then I said, I can't read it like this. I need to read it somehow another way. And I read it in authorized version. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like Jonathan with the honey. My eyes were enlightened. You know, wow. It was, just, it was honey to my lips, seriously. Let's see what else I have to say here. He gives you that knowledge of himself, of God. And your spirit cries. And that's exactly what the Holy Spirit has done with me. To his spirit, Abba Father makes you his child, adopts you to the family, makes you a legal heir with Christ. And not only that, not only you are a child of God, you are his temple, the Holy Spirit's temple, and you are a royal priest offering up praise and sacrifices of worship. <laughs> and that's a cool thing. And that's all I got to say about that. Bye. I think at the time I was pretty sleepy when I made that video. I was kind of, you know, the night it was pretty long. I used to work twelve hour shifts. But anyway, um so what works what must you work, you know? And even here I just kinda glanced across it in um uh chapter three, verse thirteen of French Corinthians, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, 
because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So you can put your works into it if all you want. But if your works are not on faith, you know, trust the Lord Jesus Christ is probably going to be ran up. If your works, so-called works, because the faith produces works, then you receive reward. Anyway, so that's all I got to say about that. Yet again, there it is for what it is. And I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you later. And God bless you.